Hello, and welcome back to the X-Plane Scenery Development Series here on YouTube. In today's video, we'll be going over animations. Animations for X-Plane are possible within SketchUp using Marginal's SketchUp to X-Plane plugin, which is what we've been using all along, but I'll still put a link down in the description. Additionally, I highly suggest that you go to Marginal's X-Plane Scenery Tutorials and Examples page, and near the bottom of the page, you'll see a suanimation.zip which is all of the examples that he has for SketchUp animation and covers a wide variety of topics that we won't be getting into in this video. So let's jump into SketchUp here and as you can see I've got the top portion of an air traffic control tower and we will be animating the little radar on top of the tower in today's example. So the first thing is how do we access the animation panel and to do that what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to select the object that we want to animate. In this case, I don't have it grouped or componentized or anything else. So we're going to triple click on it and that will select the entire object. Now, right click, go down to X-Plane, Animation, and you'll see that we have our X-Plane Animation window pop up. Now, the first field that we see is called Data Ref. There's a value and a position. A Data Ref is some piece of data that we can get out of X-Plane. And X-Plane actually has all of these data refs published. So let's take a look at that real fast. So this is the xsquawkbox.net website, but uh, if you can't easily find it and you don't want to come back to this video and get the link in the description, all you have to do is you search for X-Plane data refs and it will usually take you right here. Now, this is a incredibly long list of every piece of data that X-Plane allows you to use. But what we're going to be focusing on today is total running time sec, which as it shows is the total time the sim has been up and running in seconds. The reason we use that value is because it's independent of your frame speed and it's something that constantly ticks along and is great for animation use. As you can see also, this is under the sim slash time slash category and we'll need to remember that for later. Let's jump back into SketchUp now. You can use any value you want in the data ref, but like I said, seconds are something that's fairly easy to use, but you can use all sorts of different things. For instance, if we were building a windsock, we might want to use the wind speed value. But since in today's video, we're just going to keep this simple, we'll go ahead and input that total running time sec value in here. Now, if you remember, it was actually sim slash time slash total running time sec, so I'll paste that in there. And if this were an array value, you would actually have a position, but you most likely won't be getting into that, and that's a bit of a complex topic, so we're gonna skip that. All right, so let's take a closer look at this now. Now, the keyframe zero is the starting position, and keyframe number one is the next position that we want. Now, the easy way to do animations where something like this radome, for instance, turns 360 degrees is to break it up into 90 degree increments. So we'll leave keyframe zero in its current default position, but for keyframe one, we actually wanna rotate this radome the 90 degrees. So we'll press Q to bring up our rotation tool. We will click at the center and we'll pull it out here, drag it 90 degrees and we'll click again. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna press set over here for keyframe one. Now, why do we do 90 degrees? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Number one is if we use 360 degrees, X-Plane would look and see that it's at the exact same position that it was, and it's not going to run any animations on the object. If we use 180 degrees instead of 90 degrees, X-Plane will randomly select what way to turn the object, which might be clockwise or counterclockwise, and at that point, we don't have any control. So with 90 degrees, we can start it off in the direction that we want it to rotate. So now that we've got the rotation started in the direction we want, we've got the 90 degrees set up, what do we put in for the values? Well, keyframe number zero will stay zero, and keyframe number one is how many seconds we want it to take to rotate that first 90 degrees. In this situation, let's go ahead and put it as 1.5. Now for the loop value, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that 1.5 and multiply it by four, which in this case would be six, because the loop is how long it takes to complete the animation. And again, we're using seconds for this, so this is a six second long animation. All right, so now if we try and use this preview tool, you'll see that unfortunately, while the object is rotating, it's not rotating properly. And the reason for that is because we haven't defined the axis with which this object rotates around. So let's go ahead and do that real fast. All we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on our object here and go to change axes. And you'll see that it's actually rotating along the bottom left corner here. Now that clearly won't work for this. So we're gonna have to redefine it using the axis tool. What we do is we click at the midpoint of our object, wherever we want the axis to be. And we're gonna drag out the red axes 
and the green axes. And we need to make sure that blue axis is always pointed along the vertical. And if we go back and click on change axis again, you can see now that it's actually got the center of uh, the rotation is right in the middle of the object. But unfortunately, it's now reset the rotation that we had earlier for keyframe number one. So we're going to reset keyframe zero where it is. We're going to get our rotation tool back, rotate it 90 degrees again, and press set one more time. And now if we use the preview slider, you'll see that it is rotating properly around the axis one full rotation every six seconds. Before I end the video, I do want to just quickly show you that you can actually add more keyframes if you need to. In this situation, again, we don't, but it will allow you to do more complex animations. And using the recall button, will actually rotate the model back to the position at that keyframe. Additionally, there is a hide show section down here, and you can again use data refs and either hide or show an object when the data ref is between two different values. That's useful for things like lighting. For instance, if you want to hide lights during the day and only show them at night, which we'll cover in our next video. Thank you for continuing to follow along in this video series, and I hope you'll join us again next time for that lighting tutorial.